winter fishing. Simply the best or stupid fish sell the gear. There's no fish here and they don't take a bite. Look, winter can be just the most absolute best time to go fishing. Picture this, picture a day where it's like that chrome sea, it's glooping, there's no real wind, and the fish are on the chew. However, most of the time, they're not. They're in hibernation mode, so they're in the soft air, kind of disinterested. Or, you think they're made of salt water, they've completely vanished, there's no stupid fish. Look, there are ways to come overcome winter fishing, but there's two very different approaches. Hi, Espresso here. Look, the wonderful winter down under has finally hit. It's June the 1st, it's winter down here. Sorry about that for the Northern Hemisphere guys, but it's winter down here, and wow, has it hit with a vengeance. Winter fishing! Couldn't wait, winter's here. Most people go, oh, I don't. Winter is awesome because there are two polar, polar opposites in terms of winter fishing. And if you get it right, wow, winter fishing is just the best. So let's, the two ones, the two kind of stages are when there's not much bite going on. The fish are hard to find and they're not biting. But then there's the big, hard and heavy bite. And you know why they're doing that? Because in winter time, the fish are generally in hibernation mode. So they're only going to feed infrequently. So when they do feed, it is all on. You can go out there and catch some of the big fish that you might have missed out in summer because the big guys are hungry. And when they're hungry and it's fast bite, they are less scared, they are less wary. And the big guys want to feed up big so they can spend the next few days just chilling out, digesting and enjoying their time and not chasing down uh, the next feed. They've rest, they're resting, if you like. So when it's fast and furious, you've got to have your gear pre-rigged. There's no point in going out there and all prepared for a quiet day and it's on, the bite is on, and you've got all your light gear with light leaders and you have to change it over. You may not have time. In winter time, the bite can be really fast. Fast and furious in over 15 minutes some days. So you want to have your big gear rigged up, ready to go to put those big lures down. Instantly the bite comes on and then be able to pull those fish up and get your lure back down. So when it is fast and furious, the bite's on, bite time. So before you go out, check the bite time. So when you're getting out there and the bite's on, what you're going to be doing is a few different things with your big gear. Yeah, winter fishing, big gear. You want to be going up in leader weight. When you'd normally be fishing for, say, snapper and pearlies and that type of thing, you know, flatties, whatever, gurnard, you'll be down in your 15, 20 pound, pretty typical fluorocarbon leaders. Not 20 pound anymore, the fish are on the bite and it might be a short bite. So even with your snapper gear, you go from 20 to 50 pound leaders and you make hay while the sun shines. So even on your Kaburas, 30, 40 pound leaders on your Kaburas, but your Kaburas are gonna be the white warriors, the more aggressive, highly luminous ones. Your micro jigs are gonna be the tungsten. These are the tungsten pocket rockets, much heavier, much denser. They'll get down to the fish much faster and you use a much more aggressive motion. Similarly with your soft baits, well, start off with your jig head. The jig head, this is the stinger's jig head, I've taken the little stinger hook off because the bite's strong. Fish are gonna come in and absolutely nail this and take a bite. You don't, don't need two hooks, so you take your stinger hook off when the bite's on. I'll be using the luminous white warrior head, highly luminous, that type of thing. I'd also be maybe putting on a tuning blade instead of that hook, or lots of water wings, lots of flat, lots of meat involved. The fish are hungry, they wanna feed, they see a big deep water rig with the water wings on, lots of meat, lots of flat. Soft baits are great in winter time, but give them something meaty to eat. All right, here, top water, same sort of thing. You want this rigged up instantly because there could be kingfish or whatever. Schooling right now and then, you've got about five minutes to use a big, that's the catch 90 gram floating stick bait, the zingers. And I've also changed out just down to a single rear hook. The bite's on. We've got bow wakes of kingfish clambering over this thing. I don't want trebles on, it's just gonna annihilate the fish. You're all over it, single hook, hooked in, you might miss one or two, who cares, the bite's on! Single hook, bring it to the boat, take your photo, release the fish, they're good to go for another time. So your stick baits absolutely go big, but a single hook. Now with your jigs, could be out in deep water or shallow water, shallow water you could be in 20 metres, but still be using a 300 gram white warrior double trouble for instance. Highly luminous, really aggressive lure, I'm using one big 
hook, this is for snapper, amberjack, whatever, but quite shallow water. Uh, yeah, I'd be using this 300 gram in 20 meters of water. Big aggressive lure, big aggressive piece of thing to bite for. Your fish are coming and attack. One big hook, uh, easy to release. Now, you'd be using your deep Vs and also your jokers, but again, your white warrior is highly luminous, a really aggressive lure. I've added that tuning blade just for that extra rattle and extra irritation, but a big single hook for the big fish. Because when the feeding is on, when the bite's on, the big guys want to come over and take a bite. They don't want to be muck mucking around with little bits of tidbits. They want a big feed. So give them something big. Give them something super big. There's the giant squid wings. Here's a typical giant squid wings. It's a 500 gram. And that is a snapper lure when the bite's on. Oh, a quick mention. Winter time, I know down here, down under, we get a lot of toothy critters in the winter. A lot of guys come back and lose their lures. I use a bite leader. This is seven strands of steel inside over a PE coating, which is red. Looks kind of, I like the redness because it looks kind of like a, I don't know, a bleeding tentacle or something like that. But the best thing I like about this, this is the catch uh, PE. It's over 200 kgs of strength, but you can just simply tie knots in it. It's that easy. It's not a stiff wire. It's really bendy. These are just straight uni knots. So I use a six eight inch bite leader, so I get my lure back. Good thing to do in the winter time with all those toothy, toothy critters around. So, when it's going off, the bite's on, go really super big, go bigger than you think the fish are gonna take, and then you know your limit, because when the bite's on, I wanna pull out the big guys, they've come out to feed, I don't wanna be busy with my little fish. I wanna be busy on the big fish that's big enough to come over and attack that thing. If they're not attacking it, you just go down in size. So winter fishing, absolutely, when the bite's on, go big. Use your dedicated tackle. You do not have time to go out there, all the bite's on, and then you start doing a PR knot. Make a couple of mistakes. Put your line down. The bite's already off. Get your rigs ready to go now, in winter, before you head out there. <gasps> but most of the time, the fishing is going to be slow because it's winter. The fish are hibernating too. It's cold. It's kind of like... Well, it's like you and me in bed in the morning. Yeah, I don't know, weekday morning, you're kind of freezing cold and you wake up, and alarm or whatever. Uh, I'm not really keen to go to work. Mm, uh, slow, cold, don't want to get out of bed, don't really want to do anything today. But you're here, somebody's kind enough to start cooking your breakfast, maybe. You hear the sizzle of the pan, the bacon, the sausages. In goes the eggs, oh dear, cup of tea's on, the coffee's brewing. You can hear all these sounds. <laughs> How's your saliva going at the moment? But the breakfast is on, you can hear all these sounds and all this kind of triggers, it's triggering you, you're getting hungry. You'll go out, have breakfast, all of a sudden you're into it for the day, yay! Extra hungry and you eat it all, great. And that's what you do with fish. You set out triggers in winter time so that you stimulate them to take a bite, not just because they're hungry, because they're not hungry, they're hibernating. They might have eaten three days ago, they're still not hungry. So you're using different triggers in winter time to catch fish all of the time, bite time and not bite time. So when it's not bite time, you wanna do a few different things, similar lures, but quite a different approach. Firstly, you've gotta have a more subtle approach with your, especially with soft baits. Soft baits normally twitch, 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 make the fish run. Now you just wanna go, Twitch, twitch, leave. Let the fish come over and see what it's, what's, what's alive, kind of alive. This is the realm of your soft baits, your liveies, your buoyancy of your soft baits to come alive, leaving them alone. This is just current. You just leave your soft baits alone, your liveies, your water wings, uh, all your tentacles on your beady eyes, they're all buoyant. So you can put these lures in the water Give them a little bit of life and leave them alone. They come alive by themselves. And the key is that buoyancy. So if you've got the, the right lure with it, a very subtle approach. Because we're giving fish that, that are hibernating just a taste, a little tidbit, a little snack. We're not trying to rack them up. We just want them to take a bite. So use less motion with your soft baits, less aggressive motion with your micro jigs. Now you've moved from tungsten micro jigs, heavier, denser, and more aggressive motion to say something like that, a, a Boss Zinc Alloy, which is very light, very wafting, very slow if you like. Gives it plenty of time for the fish to see it and come over and take a bite. I've also added another hook, slow pitch lure, uh, 
the fish are hibernating, they're tentative, they'll come over and take a bite. So I'll add two hooks to a lot of my slow pitch lures when the bite's off, when it's tentative. When the bite's on, no, one single hook. Don't need to uh, have two hooks on it. Your Kaburas are more color orientated than your highly luminous ones. So I'm working with colors more, especially in the shallows. I'm not too worried about the size of the Kabura head or the size of the beady eye head because that's just the advert. That's the tentacles that get the fish to come over and bite, come over and just take a bite of one of these tentacles. So I'm working with color a lot more, uh, changing the colors out. Definitely get down the size if you possibly can, just a small bite. On your soft baits, I'll put the stinger hook back in because it's a, it's a soft bite, it's just tentative bites. They'll come over and they'll see, the, see this tail wafting up in the, in the current and they'll just take a nip at the tail, just take a nip. They're not engulfing it and that's why we've got that little stinger hook on the tail. So in the winter time when the bite's off, make sure you've got that nice little sting on the tail. You'll catch a lot of big snapper, not just little snapper, big boys that just come over and take a wounded nip and you've caught them. Yeah. Now your beady eye kaburas, these things are just made for winter time. Put them in there, leave them alone and they come alive. Yeah, that's what you guys over in the UK have been using on your black bream. Good on you. Beady eye, made for winter time. It's just the thought of having a little tender tentacle, a little taste. And as the fish comes along, sucks in the tentacles, they suck in the hooks, lip hooks, and you know what to do next. Similarly with your top water, you might be targeting kingfish or other fish, the salmon, the kawai or whatever, go smaller. Just a nice little tasty tidbit rather than your big aggressive top water rods. Hook up some fish. If you are using big jigs because it's deep water that you're in, maybe change out from your highly luminous aggressive white warrior double trouble through to just using it. These are the, this is the blue one. This is just a few luminous dots, so it can be seen, but there's no real big luminous strip. It's a lot more subtle allure, if you like. And similarly, if you're inshore, after you snapper, you're, wow, all those fish that are between your zero to 70 meter mark, adding in, this is the double trouble, adding in twin hooks and slow pitching it. The disinterested hibernating fish, they'll just come over and maybe take a little bite and then move away. So you want to hook them on that first bite. Two hooks in winter time is a good thing. Now, what really happens when you've gone out, you've prepared, you've got two completely different setups. Heavy, big, hard and heavy. Light, stealthy, lighter leader, less motion. So what happens is you're giving a little takeaway or the whole meal, but you've got to be prepared for both. If you go out there with a whole meal and they're just on a light bite, this thing is going to scare the living daylights out of a fish that when it's, on the, when it's on the feed, it's going to take a bite. And to typify, exemplify that, there's a couple of lures. Here's the better bug, which is again in the white warrior, highly luminous, highly silver. It's got a tuning blade on it for extra noise. It has a very aggressive erratic motion. This is 200 grams of better bug. And this is a little 20 gram better bug. Same lure, same fish, same depth of water, different times of the day or different days. Aggressive bite, not an aggressive bite, a little lolly, a burger. So when the bite's on, go big, really aggressive motion, go smaller when the bite's off, a little less motion, and leave it alone so the fish take a bite. And really to typify it, is something like this. This is the 500 gram. This is one of my favorite snapper rigs, actually. 500 gram, and I'll be using this anywhere from 20 meters deep out to a good 70, 80, 100 meters for snapper, amberjack, kingfish, you name it. When the bite is on, they will annihilate that in a, in, in a moment. This is a squid. This is what they're looking for. Give it to them. And then when the bite is off, you're fishing in the same depth of water, 25 meters, 40 meters, 50 meters, and you're going down to the little 28 gram little squid wings. Same size fish, same area, same depth of water, when the bite's on and when the bite's off. And that typifies the difference between the two polar opposites of fishing in winter time. Both ways, you come home with a big grin on your face, catching lots of fish, but using different lures and different leader lengths, and that's determined by Mother Nature, and she'll let you know, all right? Righty ho. Oh, if you're going out in wintertime, of course you've got big boys here, blue nose, bass, groper. Put down your highly luminous 750 and 500 gram squid wings. Some guys even put a live bait up in here. Your choice, but they work all by themselves and you're fishing all the time, down, down deep for those big winter fish. Really good system. Okay. 
Oh, there you go. And I bet you you're still going out with a few of the mates that do stray line sessions. We're on a boat stray lining and we're catching good fish, snapper or whatever, feeding them down here. That's fantastic. When you go out there, take your top water, take your soft bait rods. Because all around us, 50 to 100 metres all the way around are where the predators are, not just in the burly trail. Burly trail's got the bait and the burly and your bait fish and bigger fish. But, all, but you're bringing all of these big kingfish, all these other squid, all sorts of fish all around here. Don't just stay blinking and fishing down the stray line. Fish all around you with your top water, your better boats, your soft baits, your micro jigs. The fish are all around here. Give them something to eat. You've brought them in. Now catch them. Easy, eh? Winter fishing. It is awesome. So no matter what you're doing, the next fishing adventure that you go out, be ready beforehand. A big set and a light set. And you'll come home with some fresh fish for the family. Tag and share your mates. Get out there on your next winter fishing. Can't wait to see the photos. Thanks very much. Look forward to your comments and your feedback. Espresso out.